A lot of the work in my lab is focused on the kinds of things that we spend a lot of our days doing, using tools like knives and forks to feed ourselves, pens to jot notes, uh, the kind of things that we take for granted. However, if you have damaged the brain or you lose a limb, those processes are disrupted. One of the things we've worked at a lot is the idea that by uh, imagining movements, it may be possible to actually stimulate those same brain circuits that are involved in conducting those behaviors. So one of the things that we do to help people in this process of uh, trying to imagine movements is to provide them with some feedback so that many times if someone has a stroke affecting one side of the brain, there will be a paralysis in the opposite side of the brain. That means they still have the use of one arm, say, or one leg. And what we can do is use a mirror to reflect in the movements of that healthy arm, making it as appear as though the uh, impaired side is able to, to do some movement. Can you move your fingers in the finger test? Okay, great. So most people have some familiarity with the use of magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, to take structural pictures of their body. And we've long been able to do the same thing for the brain. All right, we're going to start up another scan now. It will be about five minutes long. Please try and hold still. What's unique in the last two decades is our ability to actually look at function and neural activity in the brain by using a, a twist on this MRI procedure. I've always had an interest in uh, basic neuroscience, and I'm particularly interested in seeing how that work can impact quality of life.